the bike banged into my shin and it just major pain. company that you could count on to make the best stuff, to have the coolest image, to uh, build the neatest parts. They were a really progressive forward-thinking company in the day. Remember, it was the first company that made a complete bike that replaced the Schwinn Stingray as the best BMX bike in the day. So it was quantum leaps ahead of what Stingrays were to what mongooses became. It was pretty impressive. The best guy in the neighborhood had a mongoose and it just, it just, it represented everything that I wanted to be. Like, like he was the cool guy, he was the better rider, like the best rider in the neighborhood, and he just, he had the best bike by far, and it was just the, the direction I aspired to, to have like, that cool bike, because then maybe that would mean that I would improve as a rider, and that would make me cooler, you know? They had a wicked reputation, they've been around forever, and I knew that the people behind their brand were just absolute legends. For me, it's like absolutely awesome to be, you know, a part of a brand that's got so much heritage. It just gets cooler and cooler for me, and uh, you know, I want I want to be riding for mongoose for quite a long time. I want to be a mongoose legend. You know, we dream about a mongoose, and I think mongoose was certainly one of the first brands that became something that you kind of really went after and you, you kind of dreamed about. It was a brand that I kind of got to know very very quickly, but also a brand that was dependable. It wasn't just like hype, it was like they had a product. Mongoose bicycles may seem like a household name now, but in the early 1970s things were different, a lot different. Kids from all over wanted to do a lot more with their Schwinn Stingrays and Huffy Penguins. They wanted to emulate motocross by riding off-road and flying through the air. The only problem was, these bikes weren't built for that type of activity. All across the country, bikes were breaking, wheels were bending, and it was usually up to dad to fix it. Well, in the summer of 1974 in Simi Valley, California, a dad by the name of Skip Hess had an idea and the goal to create a new indestructible bicycle mag wheel, similar to a motorcycle wheel. He called it the Moto Mag, and BMX Products was born. Before Mongoose, uh, BMX Products, had strictly moto mags. They told me that uh, they had a guy that had a, a wheel with non-conventional spokes that was supposed to be the, the best thing going. Well, I went out to talk to this guy. His name was Skip S. He was, had his house out in Simi Valley is where I met him. And he had what he called the moto mag wheel. The moto mag was phenomenal. Uh, if you were to understand Skip's background, what an innovator and what a pioneer in the sport. Skip comes from a racing background, car racing background, drag racing, and also he's a bike racer that most people don't know about, a very, very good bicycle road racer. And with those skill sets, and with Skip being a car racer, he was working at a company called Superior, designing car wheels, and he decided, I'm gonna make a better wheel for my son and for maybe some neighborhood friends. Most people, they would talk on their wheels, bend their rims, blow out spokes. He came up with a moto mag. This was the first box that Moto Mags came in. And if you notice, the box is brown cardboard, where the Moto Mag boxes everybody remembers is white. This is when we couldn't afford the white ones. They're more black. <laughs> when I saw my first Moto Mag, it blew my mind. I thought, that is the heaviest thing I've ever seen. And since I'm the engine on this thing and I'm a 12 year old kid, I can't wrap my head around how heavy that thing is. But that didn't stop a zillion kids from buying Moto Mags, man. Everybody thought that thing was the bee's knees. It just, it took off. Kids all around that were destroying wheels heard about the Moto Mag. Skip was brilliant in going after a race team, getting them to use the product on the racetrack, getting the publicity. Kids all over wanted the Moto Mag. I mean, it was a super cool product and, uh, you know, pretty revolutionary for the time. The Motomag brought new technology and durability to bicycles, which also introduced other challenges. The Motomag was a great invention, but one of the very first things it did, it brought to the forefront the weaknesses. The first thing you saw on all of the bikes that had normal cantilever tubes were 
they would start to separate. The welds would start to break on those tubes. They would flex. The back ends would start to wander and break. The Motomag exploited the weaknesses of frames, thereby showing people we need a better frame if we're going to pursue this thing called BMX. Mongoose was the first complete uh, BMX bicycle out there. Uh, Schwinn had a bike out there, but they, they built it a little bit for racing, but it, yet it wasn't really a true uh, BMX bike. Skip Hess realized that a better designed bicycle frame and components were needed, and once again set out to create a bicycle that could handle the demands of this new type of riding. He created the Mongoose, and then put together a top-notch BMX racing team to promote it. Skip was not just the guy sitting in the office. Skip was really a hands-on kind of guy, you know. Continuous technology was always moving forward. Skip was always creating, designing things that were just, uh, you know, you knew they were going to be good because Skip was that kind of guy. He was a full-on dude, you know, like you were just like huge factory, handmade frames. You know, how wide do you want your handlebars? How long do you want your top tube? Is your bottom bracket height okay? You know, he's a serious dude about the product. You know, and that, as a rider, that's really what you want. You felt like you really had someone you could talk to that, that understood you, that would listen, because you wanted to win races. It's like we weren't there to come second. Like you felt like you were representing BMX. It was bigger than Mongoose for me with his vision. Skip was a true owner to his product, building the right bikes for the right guys and always willing to change. I remember Skip's office was always on the top level and he could kind of oversee everything and I was like, that's the godfather of BMX right there. How did Skip get it right the first time? Because Skip was smart enough to go to a racer. Skip went to the racers, went to myself, went to John George, went to other people and looked, what do we need, what do we want? The Mongoose bike not only had great geometry, but it had, has great designs in it. And again, it comes from racers. Yeah, the original Mongoose team riders, there was Danny Oakley, there was Neil Bonds, Jeff Kosmala, Perry Kramer, Kenny Nachlin, Brian Cornell, John George, and Tinker Juarez. Yeah, when I got with Mongoose, I, I really knew that this was a really a big deal you know it was like a dream come true when you're a kid you know and you get your first big ride like this and after riding with mongoose for you know six years I, I was able to learn how to be uh, become a professional how to talk about the company how good they treated me and I didn't really realize what what I was involved in for probably a month you know I got swept up in this in this monsoon of a tidal wave I mean I was just in high gear from that moment forward and the first race was Saturday night at a um, Rams football game, halftime. What was interesting about Skip, which I really liked about him, was that he really saw the global appeal of, of BMX, not of Mongoose. He just genuinely saw the global appeal of, of BMX, and he really wanted people to know about Mongoose. By the late 1970s, BMX was capturing the minds of kids and spreading like wildfire across the U.S. I had money to buy a new BMX. But Skip had much bigger plans for BMX and the Mongoose bicycles. It was time to take Mongoose global. In the U.K., the perception of Mongoose was, right from the very beginning, was the biggest team, it was the best team with the best riders, with the best product. That was it. A big surge for the start of that double cavalry jump. BMX was like a boom thing. It would be like the hula hoop in America. You know, like when the hula hoop hit over here? When BMX hit in the UK, it was like the hula hoop. It went absolutely mad. But it's March, it's gone into the lead. Tim March leads round that second burn, being chased by Andy Ruffle. You know, in England in 1981, 1982, 1983, I mean, it was like, it just went through the roof. Almost every TV show features something about BMX. Give him 
Andy Ruffle was riding, he was like what you would call a renaissance man kind of thing in terms of how he was perceived because he would race, but he would ride brilliantly in skate parks. He could do tricks, he could do demos. So he was like the figurehead of, of the brand really for the UK. Oh, here we go, Andy Ruffle, demo, give him a big cheer, come on! He made a lot of kids want to ride a BMX bike. It wouldn't matter what brand they were, but he was on Mongoose. And if you could buy a Mongoose, you'd want to buy a Mongoose because Andy rode a Mongoose. The bass, the cougar's in your face. The king of the beach gonna rock the place. You couldn't walk down the street without, you know, being asked for autographs and stuff like that. So it was a really surreal kind of time, and it took over everything. You know, it was like, it was, it was as big as skateboarding, you know, when it boomed in the in the 70s. BMX actually was bigger in the UK, and Mongoose was pretty much responsible uh, because of the way they, they put the teams together, because of the kind of riders we had. It was definitely part of the reason that BMX kind of exploded. While BMX products and Mongoose was spreading worldwide, back in the States they were rapidly becoming the most prominent name in BMX. It was easy to see in the magazines that we were getting at the time that Mongoose had their look together uh, to a greater extent than nearly any other team in the sport. Mongoose also had a healthy original equipment manufacturing division. They helped companies like JAG with manufacturing for their products. Mongoose made their own products. When other companies needed bikes, that didn't have bikes yet, Mongoose supplied those riders. Uh, Stu Thompson, for instance, rode a Mongoose when he was riding for SE while they waited to get the STR1 done. Here I was riding for Schwinn, and they had a Schwinn Sting, which was nothing that I could be competitive on. And riding for Mongoose, they actually listened to me, took my input, built some bikes for me that at the time were completely opposite of what the Californian geometry was. They were willing to build me custom bike frames. And they were the first company I rode, rode for that actually listened. By 1980, BMX racing had evolved and expanded into a cruiser class, implementing larger size 24 and 26 inch bikes for riders that needed something bigger than the standard 20 inch BMX bike. BMX products answered with their own cruiser model for Jeff Kazmala, and they called it the Kaz Cruiser. I mean, the cruiser class was really picking up momentum, and this was like in the mid-79s and stuff like, you know, 79. And our team manager, we were one of the only teams that had an official team manager trainer. Um, his name was Cliff Halsey. He showed up at this race with his bike, and he goes, hey, we want you to ride this bike, and it's a cruiser. And, of course, I was the biggest guy on the team, and I wasn't really too interested in it. And he's like, come on, Jeff, go give it a shot and see what you think. So I'm like, okay. So I went out and practiced it, and it was like, it was like driving a semi truck. I mean, it was just big and bulky, and I'm like, wow, this is this is pretty big compared to a 20 inch. But um, I said, okay, fine, I'll race it. I'll, I'll give it a shot. Sign me up. And uh, Sunday it came down to when people were really starting to pay attention because the leader of the pack in that class was Scott Breithaupt for a long time, and uh, you know he was winning everything. And here's this guy that comes out with this bike that never raced it before, you know, giving him a run for his money. And the main, uh, I was leading, Scott put me over in one of the corners, you know, kind of dove inside of me, which was fine, no big deal, that's racing. And uh, I made it a point where I was gonna catch him. And I'll never forget coming around the last corner in the back of his pants saying C on there. And that was his kind of little trademark thing. And going down the last straightaway, I just hit the turbocharger and. I passed him going to the finish line and that was it. I was hooked, I was done. The whole next couple of weeks was back into the shop redesigning this big massive bike that they had, trying to get a little bit smaller. <laughs> and then that was it, that was the beginning of it. You go to the track and if somebody pulled up in the cruiser class and they weren't sponsored by a particular company and they were just the bike shop or something like that, they rode a Mongoose Cause Cruiser. BMX racing had peaked in the early to mid 80s and the Mongoose BMX racing team was thriving, but a whole new wave was surging in the form of freestyle BMX. Bike companies needed to either fully embrace it or get left behind. Mongoose had been around forever. I mean, everybody knows Mongoose. They were launching a new bike, a new freestyle bike, and they wanted us to be involved in that. Well, the bike they were launching was the Mongoose Decade. You know, they wanted us at the contest. They wanted us at the bike shops. They wanted us at the malls. They really want to get the word out that that Mongoose was now part of freestyle. 
Mongoose was such a big name in BMX, you know, I mean, that, I, it's one of my first bikes, you know. Uh, Nickel-plated Super Goose, you know, was my first Mongoose. But they weren't really that involved in freestyle. Um, freestyle kind of, I think, took everybody's by surprise. It took off, you know. Most of us were at the BMX tracks, you know. I did a few races and then and then I saw, you know, Bob Harrow doing some stuff at a show and I was like, oh my God, I wanna go do that. That looks really cool, that looks fun. Mongoose may not have had as big of an impact in freestyle as some of its competition, but during the freestyle boom in 1985, they released something completely different, a scooter, and they called it the Mongoose Mini Scoot. They were about to be graced once again with the success of another phenomenal product. The truth is, they nailed the scooter revolution. Mongoose was the first guy to invent a scooter in the early 80s, or to resurrect the scooter concept in the early 80s, and it was high-tech, man. It had a tube frame and a molded plastic deck and injection-molded little mini tough wheels. I mean, it was really, really cool. But the rumor is that, that the scooter got made because somebody in production made too many Moose Goose head tubes. But there was hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of 10-inch moose goose head tubes laying around and nowhere to put them because every head tube on every real BMX bike was four inches long. So a guy named John George created a frame around that giant head tube to find a home for those ridiculous head tubes and steer tubes for forks. And that's the mythology behind the development of the mongoose scooter. Mongoose didn't have a freestyle bonanza like Haro and GT did, but they killed it with scooters. Hundreds of thousands of scooters. I mean, it was, it was bananas. In the mid 80s, there was a new sport emerging called mountain biking, and it was starting to get a lot of attention. Mongoose was one of the first companies to take this new sport very seriously, and they recruited one of their BMX racers, John Tomac, to lead the charge. In 84, I rode for Mongoose as a BMX racer, and then in 85, I turned pro as a BMX rider, and they really couldn't fit me into their program, and they were cutting back a little bit, so started playing around riding mountain bikes and doing some local races in Southern California, and I started to progress really quickly um, as a mountain bike racer, and Russell Kawa back at that time was kind of heading up some of the sponsorship stuff, and he immediately, you know, wanted to help me out, and um, it just really took off immediately. Here we go! Rishi Graywall, John Tomac now to the front. In the original days, we would race the same bike. I mean, we'd run the whole bike through the, through the stage race, doing the hill climb or the cross country or the downhill or even trials back then. sport was so young, you just really didn't know, you know, where it was going to go. I mean, I had visions of maybe what direction product development might go. And, you know, I spent a fair amount of time with Skip Hess Jr. at that time, who was a pretty integral part of their product development. And that was really fun for me because I was, you know, still 18 or 19 years old. And he was kind of teaching me the ropes about how, you know, like product development or R&D from racing can actually trickle down into production and we, we built a, a Tomac signature model, uh, I think it was in, I think we worked on it in 87 and then released it in 88, somewhere right in there and immediately some of the geometry that I like trickled down in some of their other models and um, it was a bit of a departure from the geometry that was happening at that time and kind of changed it, you know, changed mountain bikes geometry for, for quite a while. But I, I think the Tomac Mongoose might have been the first signature bike for mountain biking. And it was cool taking the guys that supported me and working with them in BMX and then carrying it over into mountain biking. And it was really like, felt like a really kind of a cool team project. And um, we were kind of taking on the world from a different angle. In the late 80s, a recession hit, and BMX Freestyle was dying as sponsorship money was drying up and media coverage along with big contests began to vaporize. A new form of riding and culture called street riding was evolving and becoming popular, and being a big name corporate BMX brand wasn't perceived as cool anymore. So it was important that if you wanted to stay credible in BMX, you had to have the right core mentality. One of the first things that I did when I uh, left GT and started at Mongoose was hired uh, progressive riding 
riders of the day. Dennis McCoy was still riding a high as one of uh, the greatest overall freestyle riders in the sport. So I put him on the salary for our one-man freestyle band, and I hired Fuzzy Hall, who was a mid-pack single-A pro, who got famous doing 360s over the doubles, getting fifth in the semis, and winning dirt jump contests at ABA events. That and uh, Sam Arellano comprised our three-man BMX force. Mongoose couldn't enjoy the distinction of having invented a freestyle sport, so I wasn't going to be cooler than Haro. I wasn't going to be bigger than GT. I had just left the biggest BMX company to work for Mongoose, so I had to figure out something that Mongoose could say they were better at than anybody else. The word I chose was fun. I wanted Mongoose to be fun again. It was a great learning experience at Mongoose. I left GT in part to go to Mongoose because I thought there would be something to be gained in terms of product knowledge and product development, and Mongoose far exceeded my expectations in that regard. I was able to learn everything and go everywhere and to do some really cool stuff in the short time that I was in charge of product at the company. Then, with it being so great, why'd you leave? <laughs> <laughs> well, the straw that broke the camel's back was the uh, black transvestite that I put on the cover of the Mongoose catalog. That wouldn't have been a big thing except we had 150,000 of those catalogs printed for distribution to our shops and another 50,000 were bound into every issue of the Christmas issue of BMX Plus. And I think that didn't sit well with the guy that ran the company at the time. I knew that if I was at GT, we'd have put a picture of Gary Ellis winning the Grands. And if I was at Haro, we would have a picture of Ron Wilkerson doing nothing. We were at Mongoose. We didn't, no one was winning the Grands, and no one was, yeah, no one was, you know, lighting the world on fire. What we were all having a good time doing was riding bicycles, and uh, that seemed funny to me. And funny counts for a lot in, in, in marketing and in business and in life. And I did the funny thing. And it bit me in the butt, but I've never looked back. In the early to mid-90s, BMX and BMX freestyle was in a lull, while mountain biking was booming. And throughout all of the 90s and well into the new century, Mongoose was riding high with a dominating mountain biking team that consisted of legendary riders such as Brian Lopes, Eric Carter, Lee Donovan, Steve Larson, Mark Gullickson, Chris Clark, and more. Along the way, they racked up multiple national and world championships and helped push the Mongoose brand to the masses. In the late 90s, as large TV competitions like ESPN's X Games and NBC's Gravity Games captured the eyes of the general public, along with a whole new demographic of young kids, Mongoose often sponsored these events along with some of the top BMX dirt and vert riders of the time. When I first started riding for Mongoose, it was like I'd finally arrived. Like I'd been a pro for a while. Like I said, I'd, I'd ridden all the contests in Europe. I'd come to America and, and begun to make a name for myself. But when I finally found a place on the big established team, that was to me when I really felt like I'd arrived and my real pro career kind of began. So for me, one thing I was always very proud about my involvement with Mongoose was whilst I had this pro model that was, that was a high-end expensive bike, and I was doing my riding at the cutting edge of the sport. I always hoped that the pedigree of, of my input into the bike and the company would always bleed down so that when the kid is choosing his, his entry level bike at the department store, he would benefit from some of the pedigree from the competition. Much as when you buy a car, it has like race influence from Formula One or NASCAR or something. I always felt like the best thing I could do as a pro rider was be involved with a good brand like Mongoose and try and hand that down to the kid because I was that kid once. And as a pro, I felt like that was the thing I ought to be giving back. Got the Fuzzy Hall uh, package set here. Does it look like the back of my head? Let's see how good this guy is. Come on, Fuzz, you can do it. Here we go. Oh, that was me. <laughs> this is awesome, man. Fuzzy was mongoose, you know, and. And when I was growing up, you know, he was the main dude. And uh, when I got approached by Mongoose Australia to ride for him, I was like, oh, well, 
And what frame am I going to be riding? I'll be like, you're riding the fuzz, and I was pumped, man, you know? But I was planning to go to the States the next year, and then they were like, oh, that's awesome. So they teed up some stuff over here with Mongoose America, and here I am nearly 10 years later still riding for Mongoose and loving it, man. It's been an awesome experience and stoked to be part of the family. I'm really looking forward to for Jew Tour. I mean, it's the major contests for dirt jumping. I'm excited for that because I love comps, you know. I love the adrenaline, I love the nerves, I love to be able to push myself to my limit and do stuff that, you know, pushes me out of my comfort zone. But not only that, I'm really looking forward to being 100% on my bike. We're now 2011, it's been since 2008 since I was 100%. So I'm excited to be back on my bike and really feeling good. That, that's what I'm looking forward to the most. By 2010, the internet had become the main source of watching BMX and mountain biking specific videos in a new short form called Web Edits. With the power of social networks and bike forums, these videos could go viral in a day and potentially reach millions of views. Mongoose rider Chris Akrig used his versatility and creativity to create some of the most amazing videos to hit the web. I don't really have like one um, discipline that I'm really concentrating on at the moment. I've been given pretty much free reign and that's just brilliant for me, you know. Go out there and you know pick up a different bike every week and you know, make a cool little video, like do a little photo shoot and you know, just get people thinking outside the box a little bit and uh, maybe, you know, have a little bit of fun every now and again. Pretty much 10 years, you know, I was I was a pretty hardcore trials rider and it just got to a point where I was just getting, getting bored of that, I was over it and I just felt like I wanted to go and experiment with different riding styles. Um, with Mongoose it's just absolutely brilliant because they, they cover pretty much every genre of riding and they're, they're quite happy for me to just go out and experiment so I can just go out, have fun, make a little film, everybody's happy. Um, videos are like the main thing at the moment, uh, doing pretty well this year, you know, I managed to get two done and then I fell off a cliff. Yeah, it's awesome being, you know, um, part of such a, an amazing brand, you know, which has got such good heritage and stuff, you know, the, the list of riders that have actually rode for Mongoose over the years is pretty amazing and to be a part of that is, you know, pretty special really. I don't see myself as being like a great rider anyway, you know, or like even the level of them other riders, but I guess, you know, maybe... Uh... When I first got approached by Mongoose, um, my feelings were a little bit mixed because um, I think they get this bad rap from having a department store lineup. And what I quickly realized is that this is a high-end side of mountain bikes. This is a side that's built around making the best possible product for any kind of riding style, any kind of rider. And I test those bikes as hard as I can. I'm 195 pounds, you know, I jump them, I downhill them, I do whatever I can to destroy them. I call it R&D, Ride and Destroy. It's kind of a cool thing to ride for a company with such a big history. I think the most fun thing to ride for Mongoose is the fact that I can actually work with the company and I got a chance to, to talk about designs and just to work with them in general. That's the most fun thing I can actually have and all the legends who rode for Mongoose, it's just pretty cool to be part of it. The current team is amazing, there's a, a wide variety of dudes from all over the world that, you know, the Mongoose team, especially in BMX. The guys are so, you know, different in every aspect. You know, there's street riders, there's park riders, there's dirt riders, there's dudes that do it all, you know what I mean? And the lineup of Mongoose team is pretty heavy hitters, man. I, we could take over the whole BMX industry. <laughs> it's pretty cool, man. You know, it doesn't really surprise me at all that, that Mongoose is still going strong. Again, like I said, when we did it, we did quality stuff only. We're the number one frame builders, bike builders. So we were always the one people wanted to follow. So it was just a natural progression that when Skip decided to sell or whatever, the top people were bidding for the bike. And then as companies got larger and larger and larger, they just kept going. And because it was such a good name and because it had such a good reputation, it's still living on right now. A guy that's been riding BMX for 30 years, like he respects Mongoose because that was the first bike he rode and it was always around. The bike that I ride is a Mongoose fraction and it's sick. Like, I love it. 
for me, I had eight really great years with a really great company that's been around since before I was in BMX and will probably be around after I leave BMX one day. And for me, it kind of makes me proud to, to have been involved and, and to be involved in the heritage and the legacy of, of the company. Riding with Mongoose was the absolute best thing that could ever happen to me. I would have never built any recognition. First of all, I would have never had the fame in regards to my bike. You couldn't have rode for anybody else better, for sure. For me, it was the heritage, you know, the original BMX products, um, a leader in that area, and then helping them start their, you know, their whole mountain bike program. And um, that's the history and, and the part I remember. When you make bicycles for kids, 40 years is four lifetimes. It's astounding to me that there is still a brand that makes BMX bikes that some number of kids want to buy, and it's almost 40 years old. That speaks to Mongoose's health and vitality and longevity better than perhaps anything, regardless of where you buy those bikes. You can end your video with that. <laughs> the Mongoose brand has come a long way from its humble beginnings in Simi Valley, California in 1974. The torch has been passed on from its original creator, Skip Hess, the charismatic drag racer and entrepreneur who invented the Motomag wheel virtually took BMX to the four corners of the world and put a mongoose bike on a million kids' Christmas lists. Now, almost 40 years later, BMX racing is in the Olympics, mountain biking is a worldwide pastime with millions of participants, BMX freestyle riding has evolved to epic proportions, and mongoose now has a history rich in trophies, titles, and achievements. Mongoose makes bikes that have been developed by some of the world's greatest and most passionate riders who chose Mongoose as the bikes to have fun on and show their talents to the world. Bicycles made by a company whose roots go right back to the beginning of the sports we love. When you talk about bicycle history, it wouldn't be the same without Mongoose. Mel Stausenberger has the oldest known on record Mongoose bicycle. What are your responsibilities as a signed rider? Um, my responsibilities? Um... I guess it would be probably my contract somewhere. I can read it and let you know. <laughs> Bye, BMXers. See you next time.